Hello, Barbies, Kins, Days, and Thems. Welcome to Nicole Reacts, a show in which I, Nicole, react to online marketing gurus that I find, that other people help me find, and in some cases, who find me on the internet. My qualifications for marketing snark and commentary are that I've owned a marketing company for 16 years. In that time, I've worked with hundreds of clients on marketing strategy and implementation. So I know a fair bit and have a fair bit of experience when it comes to online marketing in its various aspects, things like social media marketing, search engine optimization, email marketing, that kind of thing. If you like this kind of content, I hope you stick around. If you're not sure, there is an entire playlist of Nicole Reacts on the YouTube channel, as well as on our company website in the blog section. So you can see me talking about close to 100 different gurus, I think, in this playlist at this point. I cover some people more than once because they're fun. So today's person is Alex Catalini, and I am 99% sure that she came on my radar because she ran an ad to me. Now, in terms of how I keep the list of who these people are, sometimes people submit things via the contact form of our website. I will put them on the screen now, breakingeveninc.com slash contact. If you have somebody you want to nominate, feel free to private message me that way. Now, sometimes what happens is if I'm perusing YouTube, I don't have a spreadsheet open. What I might do if, if I see an interesting ad go by is I will save it to my watch later list. And this person is in my watch later list, but she hasn't made it over to the spreadsheet. And I've also never heard of her. So I'm 99% sure she was an ad. So I was looking for an interesting video for us to watch together. And I thought this one was it. It's called everything you need to know about marketing in 10 minutes. And what's hilarious is it's a 15 minute video. <laughs> so I guess you got to just talk about your courses and stuff somewhere, right? Now, I'm not expecting her to cover all things marketing in 10 minutes. I am expecting, though, a well-explained overview that is targeted maybe at a nonprofit person or a small business person who maybe needs to do their own marketing and needs to get their head around sort of how marketing works and how they should think about what marketing channels they should be using. Or this video could maybe be aimed at a student or somebody who's thinking about studying marketing or doing marketing for a profession, giving a sort of general overview and channels, strategies, very broad, obviously, because it's 10 minutes long. It's kind of cracking me up that here's everything about marketing in 10 minutes, but it's a 15 minute video, but let's get started. Are you ready for this? I hope so, because I am going to demystify marketing in less than 10 minutes. The marketing plan I'm about Ooh. to show you is so simple that less than 10 minutes. Okay. And she has this particular plan. I'm always skeptical when people have one plan that's going to work for everybody. Listen, I wish there was one plan that worked for everybody. It would certainly make my life a lot easier, but maybe this video is actually aimed at a very specific kind of business. So here's a marketing plan for a solopreneur who teaches courses, or maybe this is a marketing plan for uh, a local business who's trying to get more people to physically walk in the door. If she adds that caveat, I'll be a little bit more impressed, but this whole one marketing plan for everybody, I'm not so sure. That anyone can replicate it, even if you're a total beginner. But don't let that fool you because it works and it will get you results if you follow it carefully, so keep watching. Hey Bossy, what's up? It's Alex. And this week I'm going to demystify the entire marketing process for you. Yeah. I liked her guru trailer. It was a little bit more understated than a Grant Cardone or Gary V trailer. The guru trailer, by the way, is what I call the, the little sizzle reel at the beginning of these people's presentations where they're trying to show that they're casual and good looking, but also that they know what they're talking about. And in this particular one that we just saw, she was standing on a stage and behind her, it said flight club. And so I was curious about that. So let's look at this website really quick. That might give us some context as to where this person is coming from. So here's the flight club mastermind. I understand that it's a bit to one side. I am showing it full screen. So it seems like this is the alignment that it wants to have. Hey guys, editing Nicole. So I'm editing this video on a bigger screen than I was recording on and the alignment seems fine now. So I don't know if it got corrected between the time I recorded and the time that I'm editing or if it just needs a bigger screen, but hey, whoever's in charge of this website, you might wanna check the alignment on smaller screen sizes because I was recording on a 14 inch laptop in case that's helpful. All right, back to the video. But in case you're listening, it has Flight Club Mastermind is what the text is on the screen. And it says an invite only marketing mastermind for groundbreaking strategy, family-like connection and unapologetic fun. I don't know about you, but the sort of family-like connection, unapologetic fun, I feel like that's what my friends are for. 
I do appreciate if somebody wants to make content interesting or accessible, maybe make things a little funny. Like I try to do a little bit in these videos and it seems like unapologetic fun has a, has a little red squiggly underline. So I don't know why the unapologetic part. Oh, it's like, oh, it's an animation. So it's not there. And then the little animated red line underlines the unapologetic. What's interesting is it's invite only, but in the uh, menu, there's a thing called why join and apply. So is it invite only or can I apply? Scroll down the page here for some more context. Now we have a video that's in the middle of the screen. You know what? Let's play it. I think I'm sharing my sound anyway. So let's. Hi, it's Glenn Ledwell here. Welcome to the page. You're here for one of two reasons, because I personally know you and invited you or someone I personally know knows you invited you. Either way, you're in the right place at the right time. Now we're going to tell you a little bit about Flight Club. Let's go. Okay. There was a little kind of glitching at the start. I did, as part of my issues that I had with previous recordings, I did buy a new connector for my computer to connect it to the ethernet cable in case that was the problem. The ethernet ports are pretty brand new in our office, as are the cords that we got. So I don't think it was either one of those things. This is a 15 minute video, but I'm just gonna give it like two minutes to see if we can figure out what this is about. Uh, the skyscraper view. You should be able to have it all in a real mastermind. You should have engaging speakers, engaging breakout groups, amazing, amazing networking opportunities. You should want to stay in the room the whole time. They're really trying to make people sitting at circular conference tables typing on laptops. They're really trying to make it interesting here. <laughs> then of course it should be fun. Most of all, I think there should be a family collaborative vibe. When you walk into a room, you don't feel awkward, you feel very comfortable. Whether you know everyone or you don't know everyone, everyone has a welcoming feeling. Re I think you can be welcoming without it feeling like family. I always feel like when a business or something tries to imply that we're all a family, I feel like they're trying to cre create this closeness that they will eventually take advantage of because you're not actually family. I always think that's just really weird when people emphasize this, but all right, we're gonna give it one more minute. Really, truly a family. So we have people sitting in a conference room and now we have people on a boat and then they're on a jet ski. If you want to go rent a jet ski with your friends, I feel like you could recreate this uh, pretty easily. <laughs> I had come to the very first event. Uh, Glenn had invited me down as his business partner to come check it out. And I, so my very first experience of Flight Club was there sitting in the audience as a guest. Okay, I don't know if this is Our Lady or not. I don't think it is, but... It absolutely blew me away. It was incredible. I have an event that I attended in San Diego that day on his patio and some feedback from some ways that I thought he could improve the event and telling him what was amazing about it. And we just had this moment of, why don't we do this together? You should partner with, with me on this. And of course, I was like an immediate yes. I think the very first thing that drew me in is the fact that every single person in the group was so incredibly conscious and you know I don't say that like oh woo woo you know um everyone was just there to connect and have fun and nobody was no one was you know bragging or it wasn't about like how much money you made that year it was everyone was there to truly connect and have a great time and I don't know what kind of groups these people are hanging out in normally but I feel like I have groups that I genuinely can connect with and I don't need to pay a lot of money to be in them. Listen, I'm making an assumption that it costs a lot of money. It might not, but I'll scroll down a little bit. I cannot watch 15 minutes of this. Let me just read this paragraph. Flight Club is for leading online entrepreneurs ready to propel their business to greater height. I'm guessing heights, but it's getting cut off. Hosted by Glenn Ledwell and Tristan and Sabrina Truscott, Flight Club is a private mastermind for the world's leading online marketing entrepreneurs to challenge each other inspire each other and celebrate each other. You'll walk away from every event with proven and actionable strategies to instantly take your business to the next level. A collaborative, supportive, and first-class experience, Flight Club gathers three times a year in an undisclosed location in beautiful San Diego for three days of strategy, innovation, and connection, complete with dining experiences, active networking, private cocktail parties, and curated adventures.
apply to our next event for free, $10,000 value. Okay, so there's three events a year times $10,000, it's $30,000 I'm guessing to join. Oh my God, the fact that this is cutting off is driving me crazy. Like I said, I swear it's full screen right now. I don't know why it's cutting off. We got some video testimonials. What you get as a member. Okay, great. Exclusive flight club membership, three, three day flight club mastermind events a year. So three times in the three days. Okay, so nine days of in-person stuff. Unrestricted access to Flight Club Lounge, which is a complete library of all past speaker presentations, audio recordings, and resources. This is all caps, pure gold. Direct access to Flight Club Crew. This includes family level access to Glenn, Tristan, and Sabrina in their complete Rolodex of contacts, partners, and resources. I'm missing a comma there, but that's okay. Flight Club Manifesto, our top secret member directory, so you know exactly who's in the crew, their specialty, and how they can help propel your business forward and how to contact them. Expert training, expert training Zoom calls in between live events. This gives us a chance to stay connected all year. Okay, and they're not committing to a number of those, by the way. There's just some in between. Members only community, access to a private only Facebook group and WhatsApp group so you can ask questions. Flight Club Getaway, an invitation to our week-long Flight Club trip. So you have three three-day-long San Diego things, and then you have a week-long trip to an international destination, plus gifts and swag, free gifts, mer free merch, and preferred partner status. Get your VIP pilot pass. Oh my God. Hold on. Why join? How much is it? Of course, you have to apply to see how much it is. That's a total guru thing to do. Okay, so she's in this. Good to know, I guess. Let's get back to the video. I see now she's not the same person in the video, but for a second, I thought it was the same person. Yeah. Now it goes without saying that there is a lot that goes into creating a marketing plan. And as your business grows, your marketing will grow and evolve with it. But when you are just getting started, marketing does not have to be overly complicated or overwhelming. The truth is your entire marketing plan can be broken down into six very simple steps that okay. anyone can follow to get results. Yes, even if you are just getting started. And that is exactly what I'm going to share with you in this video. I am revealing the exact six step marketing plan that I follow to launch the coffee posse with my very first video right here on YouTube on February 13th, 2019, and then turn it into a multiple seven figure brand just three years later. Multiple seven figures, ding, ding, ding. So before she says her thing, just to see how our visions align, let me say what I would say to a sort of group that was in a sort of marketing 101 presentation, or it was just a group of a bunch of different kinds of businesses and I wanted to give advice that was generally useful. I would say if you have a way to reach your existing customers and a way to reach out to new customers, at least one of each, you're gonna be in pretty good shape. Let me explain. So an existing customer is somebody that has transacted with you, right? So you probably have their cell phone, you have their email, you have their mailing address, or you have some combination of those things, right? So coming up with some way that you're going to periodically reach out directly to those people. Maybe it's a monthly email newsletter. Maybe it's a weekly text message. Maybe it's uh, a quarterly mailing, like in the mail, whatever it is, right? There's some way that you're directly reaching out to your existing customers. And number two, reaching out to new customers. So that could be running ads to your target demographic. That could be posting on social media. That could be running a uh, sort of an in-person event. Maybe it's like a workshop or something like that, that you run on a regular basis to get new people to come in and learn about what your company does. Obviously to be a business, you need returning customers and you need new customers. You need both, which is why you need to think about both groups of people when you do your marketing. Now, the conclusion that most people come to as I'm going through this presentation is, wait a minute, reaching out to pre-existing customers, reaching out to new customers. Oh, I could just do social media for that because that reaches both of those groups of people. And the thing is, yes, it does. And that's why a lot of social media trainings exist, right? Because it is a pretty effective vehicle for new and returning customers. But much like you wouldn't put all your money in one stock, I would suggest that you have at least two different marketing channels that you're maintaining. Because let's face it, if you're killing it on TikTok and then TikTok's algorithm changes, you're kind of SOL. So what you want to do is I would say two different marketing channels, at least. If you want to do more, that's great. But if you just have just a little bit of bandwidth or you're doing the marketing yourself and you have limited time, I would say two different channels. And I think that one of them should be some kind of list that you're building either with text messages or with email. 
That is my personal opinion. So let's see what she says about marketing in a general way. Now that you know what I'm thinking. Later and be crowned marketer of the year in 2022 by digital marketer yes i won marketer of the year with literally the simplest funnel ever there are no quick hacks or weird tricks in this video you know i like to keep it real with you so what you'll find here are timeless marketing truths that work so if you're into that kind of thing you know what to do make sure to subscribe to my channel below for even more juicy marketing videos like this and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified when my next video goes live all right, now let's dive into the first two most often forgotten, but most important steps of a solid marketing plan. Step one, get clear on who you are. I have said it once, I have said it a million times, if you wanna be successful, no matter what product, service, niche, or business you have, then you have to get clear on who you are and how to communicate that. Yeah, you need to crystallize your brand messaging first. Because here's the thing, if you do not have a solid foundation to build the rest of your marketing around, then everything will come crumbling down. Your brand messaging guides every single thing you do in your business. Okay. It guides your communication. It informs literally all of your marketing efforts and campaigns. So this really does need to be one of the very first things that you consider when you're starting to look at your marketing plan. Ask okay, I don't disagree with her. I think this is important. Just a couple of things. Number one, I think branding is important so that when you put forth effort marketing yourself, that people attribute the things they're seeing to your company. So if you think about it, if I post something to Instagram, someone is going to see it in their feed as they're scrolling, right? They're going to see that post in isolation of everything else that I do, right? They're not going to be on my particular Instagram page. They're not going to be coming from my website. They're going to see this picture or this video in complete isolation of anything else. So what I want when people see it is they're like, oh yeah, that's breaking human communications. I've seen their stuff before. And I want them to attribute all the work I'm doing to my actual company so that when it comes time for someone to think about marketing, they're like, oh yeah, that breaking human communications. I follow them on Instagram. I follow them online. I think that they really know what they're talking about. So part of branding is that people recognize that your efforts are actually your efforts and connect them with your business. And the second thing, which I think is a natural follow-up question to what she just said was that People are like, yeah, branding is important. You know, Apple, I've heard all these like case studies about how important branding is and how it's changed businesses for the better to have good branding. How do I figure out my branding as a small business? I don't know if she's going to provide a template or some guiding questions or something like that. But in case she doesn't, I'm linked to a video that I did a couple of years ago. I probably should re-record it at some point about three different kinds of brand guidelines that you can have as a business with some examples, and then you can figure out at what level you want to commit to branding guidelines based on that. So anyway, let's get back to it. Ask yourself, what do I want to be known for? What are my non-negotiables? What are the things that I value? What is the change I want to see in my industry? How do I want to serve my audience? What is my brand promise? So in total, there are actually 11 messaging elements that you need to take into consideration in order to build a very solid brand messaging strategy. And yes, I got you. I have broken them all down for you inside my free brand voice checklist. So make sure to check that out at the end of this video if you need a little TLC in the branding department. All right. Okay. She's going to make us download them. Okay. Got it. So that leads us to the second step of any solid marketing plan. Step two, get to know your customers really get to know them. Now, I know you've heard me say this before, but if you try to sell to everyone, you'll end up selling to no one. And this is true no matter what type of awesome, universal, helps everybody and their dog type of product or service you have. If you want to sell anything to anyone, you need to form an emotional connection with them first. And in order to do that, you need to speak their language. And in order to do that, you need to talk about their core values, the things that drive them to take action, their deepest, darkest desires and fears that either motivate them or hold them back. You get the picture. So let me give you... I will say this is a lovely thought, but I'm just going to say it. I know there's certain kinds of businesses where this sort of heart-centered approach feels weird. Maybe you have a chain of gas stations. Someone is driving by and they're going to stop and gas up their car and buy a sandwich. Do you know what I mean? So while I understand like your customer isn't everybody, you can think about narrowing it down to a customer in a specific geographic area. You can think about differentiating yourself with something. Like maybe you're the gas station that uses a local cheese on all your sandwiches. Do you know what I mean? So some of this could be like deep and heart centered, like she's talking about your values and things like that. And some of it could just be like, okay, what makes me different than the gas station that's one block away from me? 
what do I have to offer? How can I communicate that to my customers? So it, it could be a little bit less deep than this, but. Let me give you a really good example from a brand that I love. So let's say I am selling t-shirts to men, t-shirts, right? They are widely available, a basic commodity, and they're basically for everyone, right? The market is incredibly saturated. There is nothing more common than a plain white tee. So in order to stand out and get customers in a market like that, you really need to know your customer, like really know them, and then be able to directly address their biggest values, desires, and challenges in your marketing. You need to speak their language. And a brand that does this really well is a brand called True Classic Tees. They sell t-shirts for men, but they have a very specific USP and target a very specific audience. Their shirts transform dads into daddies. <laughs> they know their audience better than anyone else. They're speaking to men who want to look hot in t-shirts they wear, even if they have a little bit of a dad bod. And hey, I think these t-shirts, because I feel like I've been served this advertisement before, they're sort of tighter on top and there's looser fit as they go downward. So that it shows off maybe some broad shoulders or a little bit of arm muscle, but it camouflages a belly. I think that's what this is here. Hey, I love a good dad bod and a dad bod in a nice shirt. Hell yeah. So the bottom line is this, get to know Ooh. who you're selling to. And so much of the hard work is already done. Hey guys, editing Nicole. So in the example she just gave us, these t-shirts are manufactured in a specific way. They're like a specific product for a specific kind of person. A lot of us run businesses that are a little bit more general than that, because maybe we operate in a small market or maybe we just don't have a very specific idea like that. So for example, I have two co-working spaces and the idea of a co-working space is it's basically a desk, a chair, and there's shared resources like high-speed internet, printer, conference room, that kind of thing. So that applies to a pretty broad sector of the population. So I might want to show that one of our members is a makeup artist and once a month she has her potential customers come in for a makeup trial. And so we give her a central location for her to be able to do that. Because obviously if she's doing a lot of wedding or event makeup, she's typically going on site, but to meet with people and stuff, she needs a general space. I also might want to showcase that we have one of our members who does 3D printing and show that you can set up 3D printers and other kinds of equipment on a desk and have access to not only high-speed internet, but maybe some other people who are interested in 3D printing and can help you troubleshoot issues. I might want to show that we have a marketing company, which is us that works out of there. So what I want to do rather than having a unique product is I want to show different people using my very basic product in hopes that maybe somebody will be watching my social media and say, oh, I've been thinking about 3D printing. Maybe I should go into Anchor Space and meet up with Ben or, oh, I am a wedding planner and I mostly work out of my house, but it would be really nice to have a place to meet clients like this makeup artist does with her bridal clients. So anyway, that's another approach too. All right, back to the video. And now you are ready to move on to step number three, identify your positioning strategy. All right, so the first thing you need to do when you're building out your positioning strategy is research. I know research, everyone's favorite thing to do, right? It can be really fun, even if it is a little bit time consuming, but I promise it is well worth it. No matter what you do not. Okay. okay so you've done your branding guidelines. You thought about your customer. Now you're doing your positioning strategy. Okay. I'm genuinely not sure where she's going with this. Want to skip this step. You want to know what your market is searching for and how you can serve them in a way that no one else does. This is your USP, your unique selling proposition, and how you stand out. And one of the best places to start this process. But wouldn't figuring out your customers go hand in hand with figuring out your unique selling proposition? So if I'm selling t shirts for a certain body type, wouldn't that be me addressing the fact that maybe there isn't a lot of t shirts on the market that are flattering? that are soft and that are cut for certain body shapes. I don't get how this is different than step two. If you think about your target customer and what they care about, wouldn't you just be talking to them about it as it relates to your product? I'm not sure why this is a whole separate step, but. Process is by doing simple keyword research. Understanding the best keywords to use will not only give you insight into what your audience is actually looking for, but will help you figure out what other people are doing and how you can do it better. Now, remember, just because someone is selling something similar to you doesn't make it a bad thing. In fact, it's proof of concept mm -hmm. that there is a yeah. market for what you have to offer, and that is a really good thing. Now, I am not an SEO expert, but I do know that using the right keywords in your marketing can also help you rank on Google, which, hey, is just an added benefit. So I am an SEO person, so 
let me talk a little bit about this. Yes, keywords are important. And you want to use words on your website that your customers are actually looking for versus maybe how you refer to yourself in your industry. An example I've used on this channel before is what I do is technically called inbound marketing, but I don't think the average person has even heard that term before. So I don't use the term inbound marketing on our website. I use the term internet marketing, online marketing, small business marketing. I use these kind of terms throughout our site so that people have an accurate idea of what we do and that we do come up and search when someone's searching those words. But the thing is that a lot of people place a lot of importance on what's called on-page SEO. So on-page SEO is things you can do to your own website to improve how you rank. So that's adding keywords, that's building links coming into your website from other websites, because let's face it, the more connected your website is with the rest of the internet, the more trustworthy it seems like your website is. That kind of makes sense, right? You might want to build in some usability stuff, making sure your site's mobile friendly, making sure it loads fast, making sure there's not dead links on your pages that go nowhere, that kind of thing. So these are all things that people spend a lot of time and energy on. And it is important to get those things as right as you can, but here's the thing. The rest of the internet is infinitely bigger than your website. So you have on-page SEO, which it feels really good to spend time and money on because it's on your own website. But then you have off-page SEO. So that's like building links on other websites. A lot of times people use social media for that. That is having a positive reputation that people are saying nice things about you in Reddit forums or on review websites and things like that. So I think a lot of people spend a lot of energy concentrating on their own website, but your website is in a context of the rest of the internet. And so you have to care about that too when you talk about SEO. I had a prospective client ask me the other day, we were talking about basically fixing up their existing website. And he was like, is SEO included in here? And it got me to thinking, okay, I guess naturally when I'm working on a website, I write unique page titles and descriptions for all the pages. I make sure that there's a site map, that there's an RSS feed. I make sure that the pages load in less than three seconds. I make sure that there's no mobile display issues at different screen sizes. So we test in a couple of different browsers and on a couple of different devices for that, that kind of thing. And to me, that's important to do that if I'm working on a website and the page is important, but the rest of the internet is important too. So just wanted to mention that about SEO. So if you are gonna have a firm do some search engine optimization for you, I would ask them what they're planning on doing. And if they're weird about the details or they don't want to tell you, please don't hire that person. It means they're doing weird stuff like buying links or taking some other shortcuts that aren't going to benefit you in the long term. So let me give you an example. We're working for a sort of small batch lifestyle kind of brand company. And what I want to do for them is a combination of fixing some issues they have on their website so they hired a previous SEO firm who did what's called keyword stuffing. So they put a bunch of extra keywords on pages. And so it seems spammy to Google. So we want to go in and fix some of those pages, get rid of some of those extra words. And then some pages have really not much information at all. So we want to add information to those pages so that they get better indexed by Google. So besides fixing their on-page issues, we also want to add their product catalog to Pinterest so that when people are searching on that platform, that they are seeing those products. And we know from our experience that Pinterest product links drive traffic for sometimes years after they're inputted. So if these people are going to hire us for a limited time, I want to give them the most bang for their buck. So for them, that strategy, I think is going to work well. If a different kind of company came to me with different goals, I would have a different strategy as I should. Dismounting from my soapbox. Creating video content. So the first thing that I suggest you do is to make a list of all the things your business does or is. Here are some examples from my brand, The Copy Bossy. Copywriting, digital marketing, content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, storytelling, freelancing, copywriting courses and programs, branding courses and programs, sales page courses and programs, email marketing courses and programs, and marketing courses and programs. Okay, so a generic list. Now, seems like she makes a lot of money off her courses and programs. These keywords are fine to use, but I definitely wouldn't focus only on these yeah. because let's be honest, these keywords are extremely popular, mm -hmm. which means other people are gonna be using them and targeting them in their marketing. And the more competition your keywords have, the harder it yeah. will be for you to actually rank with them and stand out. 
So this is where the research phase really comes into play. You want to accumulate a list of other relevant keywords and questions that your audience is actually asking, the things they search for, the things they care about. And there are a lot of tools you can use for research like this, like TubeBuddy, VidIQ, Answer the Public, Google AdWords Keyword Planner, Moz Keyword Analysis, Uber Suggest, and yes, even ChatGPT. And then there's the good old classic Google search. Just type into the search engine a keyword or a phrase and look at all the related search results that populate at the bottom of the screen. These are all suggestions for a reason. They are highly searched terms by your target audience. So the name of the game here is really just to understand your audience and what they're searching for. And of course, another great way to use Google in your research phase is to check out the websites that are actually ranking in the top few spots of Google. Those are your competitors. What are they doing? What kind of content do they share? What offers do they have? And what can you do better or different? This is going to give you a lot of great intel to the best place to start for your next step, which is step number four, create your content strategy. So the next so just FYI, the free tools that she mentioned will give you an idea of a keyword or key phrase and the volume of that search and maybe how it's changed over time. So the, the classic example is if you look up in Google Trends, you look up Halloween costume. So it's very cyclic. There's a certain period of the year that it goes up and then it goes down. Every single year it does that. Some words are more trending upward or trending downward based on popularity, that kind of thing, right? What the free tools won't tell you is how competitive the keyword is. If you use, for example, Keywords Everywhere, which is a paid tool, it will show you not only the volume of search, but how competitive it is. So for example, if you find a high volume search term, but a lot of people are running ads using that search term, it's going to be really hard for you to stand out. So what you want is a combination of something that is being searched, but people aren't bidding on when it comes to ads and things like that, so that you have a chance to actually rank for that keyword or phrase. So if you do want some competition analysis, I would use a paid keyword tool and you can get it just for a month or use the free trial of the paid keyword tool. Typically they tend to be about a week. You can try it for free or a certain amount of searches and just use that to get some initial information. And what you can decide to do afterward is to pay once in a while and double check that the words that you're optimizing for are still working. So just be ready to spend, I don't know, 20 bucks or less to buy a keyword tool for a certain amount of searches or for a month and do your keyword research from that to get your competition scores too. The next thing you want to do is map out the main topics and the related subtopics that you'll post content about. Now, of course, you want to take into consideration your keywords, but ultimately the purpose of your content isn't just to be searchable, but to also be highly valuable and interesting to your audience. But who's doing the searches, right? People do the searches. But I will say an interesting thing I was reading last week, and I'll link to it in the show notes, and maybe I'll put it on the screen if there's an interesting graphic, but 49% of Google traffic now is bot traffic. So it's not even real people. So ultimately, if something's good for search engines, it's something that's good for people searching too, because people are using the search engines. But just know that if your traffic has changed a little bit, some of it could be bot traffic. So check that out in your Google Analytics or whatever you use to uh, measure your website traffic. This one, I learned the hard way and I got really bored really fast. The other thing to remember is that people don't only want to know what you do, they want to know who you are. Educational how-to type of content is only one type of content that people care about. So come up with a list of topics and subtopics that you'd be interested in talking about and throw in plenty of stories and anecdotes from your experience and personal life as well. Be fresh and interesting first, and that is what people want today. Omnichannel marketing is very important to build your brand awareness, and I know that can sound a little bit overwhelming, but I promise you there are simple systems and processes that you can implement to make all of- Are you gonna define what omnichannel marketing is? I love how she threw out the term omnichannel marketing without any desire to explain it whatsoever. So let me explain it. Omnichannel marketing is the integration and cooperation of various channels organizations use to interact with consumers with the goal of creating a consistent brand experience. This includes physical example stores and digital channels example websites. So what she means by omnichannel marketing is that all the different marketing channels you're using are working together. I don't know why she had to use the word omnichannel and not explain it, but anyway. 
all of this a million times easier. Mm -hmm. So I actually go into my entire omni-channel marketing strategy and how to create fresh and fun content inside my brand new marketing program for the first time ever, Storm. like ever. I am revealing everything I did to build a coffee posse from the ground up. Like getting to look over my shoulder as I plan launches, design my content marketing, write promotional campaigns, and craft evergreen offers. Except even better because instead of learning just what I did, you are going to learn exactly how I did it and get absolutely- I'm so curious how much this costs. Everything you need to do it too. This is by far the juiciest program the Coffee Posse has ever released. So if you want to get my insider strategies, proven and repeatable processes, and customizable marketing blueprints that you can apply immediately in your own business to ignite your authority, productivity, and sales fast, click the link in the description box below to check out Storm my brand new program. I am so excited about it. All right. So now that you have, oh, your don't worry, we're going to look at it after your content strategy in motion. It's time to consider the next step of your marketing plan, which is step number five, build a marketing funnel. Ooh, I hate funnels. So up until this point, we've been talking a lot about your front end marketing efforts, right? And while this may not generate leads or sales, now I'm going to talk about your back end directly is going to make your funnel so much more effective. So when it comes to creating your funnel, you have a lot of different options that you could try. You could do a webinar funnel, a quiz funnel, a free trial funnel, a coaching call funnel with literally a million combinations of upsells and downsells and everything in between. I love how people who make funnels make it sound like it's so complicated. It really isn't. It's this idea that you have people who are aware of you and you want to offer them something that they can take a step toward maybe buying something from you. And so typically that's gonna be, you're gonna give them something for free, whether that's a piece of content, whether that, like she said, is a trial or something like that. So in exchange for getting the free thing, they're gonna give you their contact information. And now that you have their contact information, now suddenly a lot of other things are possible in terms of reaching out to them. That's all it is. So let's see how much more complicated she makes this sound so that we buy our program in but let me ease your mind just a little all you need is one simple funnel to get started that is all i used that is all you need right now and then of course you can always test and expand from there so the basic funnel that i recommend looks something like okay i'm looking at her funnel so Traffic is going to a landing page. This traffic is coming from search engines. It's coming from social media. It's coming from affiliate marketers. It's coming from sponsors. I don't know why someone's sponsoring something to go on your landing page, but okay. It's coming from paid ads. It's coming from content that's sitting out there. I'm guessing content might be guest blog posts or maybe content that you have on other websites that isn't your site. It goes to a landing page and then you give them free value. So like I said, you give them something right? That they're going to want to give the contact information for. So like I said, maybe it's a, a free course. Maybe it's a free ebook. Maybe it's a free series of templates. Maybe that's a free webinar. I don't know what that is. It's something for free that you can offer people so they can get to know you so they can understand the information more. And then as you see, it's a series of emails. There's just little envelopes and that is going to a sales page. I don't know why this is complicated. It isn't. You drive traffic, give away something, and then you market to them until they buy something. That's all this is. Like this. First, you need traffic. So you can do this organically or paid. Now, organic traffic will come from all the hard work you did earlier with your keywords and strategically planning your content. And that is why that is so important. But also you could pay for traffic as well through say advertising. So next up are leads. Now, something she hasn't mentioned, which I think is valuable in terms of getting something for free is leveraging other people's audiences, right? Working with, with other people. So maybe me and a branding agency host a webinar together. And so I get in front of their audience as an online marketer and they get in front of my audience as a branding agency. So we can each bring each other clients. Or if we want to take this as a small business thing, maybe I do an Instagram takeover with our local cooperative kitchen and they take over our local, I have a co-working space. They take over our co-working space and I do my messaging about my co-working space on their platform and they do messaging about their cooperative kitchen on our platform. So there's different ways you can do it, but a lot of quote unquote free traffic and free growth can come from other people's audiences. And why these gurus always have big audiences is that they are working with other gurus who have big audiences and leveraging each other's audiences. I bet that if we look at her YouTube list, 
she has guest videos where she's interviewing a guru or whether they're presenting something together. I bet that there's some cross pollination here. And that's a much quicker way to build an audience than trying to attract everyone from scratch that knows you or that you're paying to access. That's what a lot of these gurus have their success from that they will never say. Hey guys, editing Nicole. I didn't have to scroll far in the YouTube list of videos on Alex's channel to see that she did a lot of interview style content about a year ago. Now I know YouTube's kind of date stamps are a little bit garbage. Like it just says about a year ago. So I'm gonna post a couple of these thumbnails on the screen to show you what I mean. And what I'm also gonna do as I'm showing you these thumbnails is tell you the relative size of the audience of the person that's involved. I also wanna point out that if we look at video views for her channel, I'm looking here at Social Blade stats. If we look at starting about a year ago, we see them going up when she starts to incorporate other people into her content. I think a lot of these gurus leave that part out because they are often either lucky in who they know in terms of their network or they're paying for expensive masterminds. And let's face it, people aren't going to pay for your mastermind if they're paying for an expensive, well-connected mastermind. Now, are they? So I see why they gloss this over. But just pointing out that involving other people in your content, especially if they have platforms too, will grow your audience a lot quicker. Back to the video. So again, there are a lot of ways to build your leads, but I find the most effective way is simply offering something highly valuable for free in exchange for an email address, usually called a lead magnet, which you will also create an opt-in or landing page for. And of course, I offered you my free brand voice checklist, which you can get at the end of this video. And that is an example of a lead magnet in action. And now once you've got those leads, the next step of the funnel is to actually nurture those leads and build relationships and awareness and loyalty for your brand. So you typically don't I love want- how it's like we're building relationships. We're sending them a series of emails. They're getting a series of messages from us, but we're not necessarily hearing back from them. So I'm not sure about this building a relationship thing so much as we, we're building, I guess, a relationship, but it's definitely on one side. Don't want to try selling a brand new lead an expensive product right out the gate first yeah. you want to nurture them maybe offer them a lower ticket product that's an easier yes then send your lead a series of emails to welcome and indoctrinate them into your brand let them know what they can expect from you and what they should be excited about and then this is the most important part stay in their inbox consistently. So this means showing up with your email marketing and sending out regular emails on a consistent schedule. And lastly, of course, the point of why we're doing all of this is to sell. Now, of course, you don't want to lead with that right out the gate, but that is why we are all in business. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking for this, you'll need a sales page and an email sequence designed to promote your offer, but you can also use a webinar or any other sort of sales tools. So I like to run my offers for about one week at a time and send out an email every day to my list but there are a lot of different frequencies and cadences that you can consider. You'll also, also I'm just pointing out that she uses what's called a launch model, which is, hey, I have this copy posse program and it's opening up on Friday and it's only gonna be open for 48 hours for you to sign up. So with the launch model, you create a lot of kind of lead up to it and then you create a lot of urgency during the sign up window. You don't have to run your business that way. It actually seems pretty exhausting to have to run your business that way, but it is a method that a lot of these gurus talk about, but I just want to let you know that it is not the only way that you can get people into a program. You'll also want to cross promote on your social media channels throughout your promotion period and ultimately continue and continue to nurture that relationship with your list. Now I have an entire video that actually breaks down this exact funnel step by step. And if you want that, I'll link to that at the end of this video for you to watch next. Now we're moving on to the next step of your marketing plan, which is step number six, monitor metrics and test. Okay. I cannot tell you how important this yeah, is. Yeah, I agree. Marketing is just one. There's something to be said with throwing a bunch of stuff to the wall at the beginning and seeing what sticks, but there is this period where you do have to see what sticks. You know, something we've started doing is we do have reporting that we set up for people. So if people just want like a sort of custom report every month, we do offer that. So if you want to do your own social media and you just want like a sort of dashboard that's pulling all the stats in and then someone to look it over and offer you suggestions, we offer that. But for our clients who we're doing ongoing work for, we just have added this monthly report in because it helps show that the work we're doing is working. So it's a little bit self-serving too, but it is important for you to be able to feel comfortable pulling your stats and understanding what is and isn't working. And if you don't have that, please like you can hire someone to make you a dashboard or to look over your stats with you once in a while and give you some suggestions. Uh, this is important, I agree. 
one giant experiment at the end of the day. Yeah. There is no one right way to do it. Data-driven decision-making is your ultimate goal. So really put on that scientist cap, that mindset of, hey, we're going to try it all out and see what works. Now, in the beginning, you might not have that much data to go off of, and that's okay. Remember, everyone starts somewhere. But as soon as you can, you should be monitoring your metrics. This editing style is really interesting to me when people talk and then it cuts to a popular TV clip or an, an animated GIF or something. It, it's so interesting to me. Uh, not really my taste, but so many of these gurus, it's how they edit their video. You want to see what's working so that you can do more of that, of course. But then you also yeah. want to see what's not working so that you can maybe pivot or change course and direction. Now, this looks like running ads and seeing which ones are most successful or monitoring the open and click through rates on your emails or seeing which offers are actually selling more or converting more. And where does the majority of traffic in your business come from? Where did the majority of the buyers come from? All of this information is really gonna help you zone in yeah. and create more targeted offers for the right people, which is the name of the game. I will say a lot of people fall into the trap of seeing like what generates a lot of traffic and assuming that doing more of the thing that generates the traffic is gonna get you more business. But what you do wanna do is figure out how that business is coming in. So if you have, for example, an e-commerce website, what you want to do is look at who bought something and then do a secondary metric of the source of the traffic. And what you might find is a majority of your traffic comes from Google searches. But when you look at actual purchases, most of the people who made purchases, like 30% came from Instagram or something. Like you might find that the people who made purchases in terms of traffic are different than your overall traffic. So if you're like me and you really don't sell much on your actual website, it's more like service based. What I do when I meet with people is I ask them how they found us. And that's been really helpful because what I found is that one of our clients wrote a lovely article and he didn't mention us in the article. So I've gotten some new clients from that. I've also gotten some clients from Reddit, oddly enough. So I know that, okay, if I have more of a presence on Reddit, I will probably get more clients because that's what seems to be working. So whether you're actually measuring it or you're just asking people and tracking it, I think it's important to, to find out where your customers are coming from and not just your traffic of the game. But remember, marketing is not linear and it yeah. is always changing. Yeah. So what worked last month might not work this month and might not work next month. And that is okay. What I love is just five minutes ago, she's like, follow my program and I'll show you exactly what I did and you can replicate it. Okay, and now you're saying like next month, the same things won't work. Okay, then what good is your program? That is why you test. And no yeah. matter what, stay true to you and continually revisit everything you mapped out in step one. <laughs> because remember, as a passionate entrepreneur, you have the creative superpower to literally change lives. And it is your duty to protect that superpower at all costs and stay focused on the impact you are here to make. And this is a reminder that I have to give myself all the time. It is so hard to stay in your lane when there are a million people out there blowing hot smoke up your butt telling you what's the next best thing to focus on. <laughs> and while it's fun to chase the white rabbit down every hole you find, you've got to build your own wonderland and remember why you are here. Or and you can't just chase trends all the time. I get it. But at a certain point, if there seems to be a real shift in how things are moving, I think it's important for you to look up and be like, wow, TikTok shops is really changing e-commerce in a pretty big way. What are they doing? How are things moving over there? And how can I use this information to improve my e-commerce business? You know what I mean? Yes, stay in your lane and stay the course, but also it is important to look around and see where things are moving so that you can be moving in that direction too. Or you'll just end up burned or straight up burnt out. People mm -hmm. always ask me, Alex, how did you build a recognizable brand and a successful business and a loyal fan base in just three years? And honestly, if I had to sum it up in one sentence, my answer would be this. I trusted my creativity, I listened to my community, and I paired what's working in the market today with the timeless marketing principles that have worked for me consistently over the past decade. Everything. And I joined a really expensive mastermind with a bunch of marketing gurus, and we built each other's platforms. And then I found a group of people who were willing to pay me like thousands of dollars for a marketing session. And then I used those initial people to say that I grew a six figure business and then I sold it to more people and so on. Everything that I shared with you in this That's the other video. part. And now I want to share all of my best marketing strategies with you. A proven blueprint that's... It's not that you lack creativity and vision why you don't run a seven-figure business, okay? It's not. There's things that these people are doing that they're never going to tell us that are the actual keys to their success. 
rooted in marketing truth. And that is exactly what I teach you in my upcoming brand new video coaching program. Video coaching. So if you want my insider strategies, proven and repeatable processes, and a customizable marketing blueprint that you can apply in your business immediately to take the world by storm, then make sure to hit that link in the description box below. Oh, let's go hit the link. With a brand new video. Let's go hit the link, guys. Let's go hit the link. Okay, so this is the website. This wig is interesting. Ignite your authority, automate your income, and amplify your impact with a step-by-step -step marketing method. All right, I'm going to scroll down a little bit because I want to see how she's going to sell it to us. Every single strategy and tool I use to build a seven-figure business from scratch in one year is your, now yours. Although everything could change, right? Everything could change next month. She said that in the thing. So join award-winning marketer and founder of the Copy Posse, Alex Kadani, as she guides you step-by-step -step through her proven storm marketing method. Business is personal. I will say, like, I don't hate this branding. I kind of like the colors and stuff, but it looks, oh my God. From zero to $100,000 in one year, I'm the expert in figuring out what not to do. I'm just seeing if one of if the, the co-founders of that mastermind she's in are on here. I thought it was this woman, but I don't think it is. A marketing genius. Okay. All about Alex, content plan. Okay. So she's got some level one. This is what you're going to learn. Level two. This yellow is a little bit much, but like I said, I don't. I don't hate this. I'm not really a purple person. Not that that's anything you care about, but I, I the dark. I like the dark blue and the black together and the white. That's nice. How it works. I haven't seen an enroll button in a little while. So this program is right for you if this program is not right for you if you're not interested in growing your business through content marketing. You just want to make a quick buck. You don't care about making the internet a better place. You're not a team player. You are a tire kicker, and you're looking for reasons to fail. So basically, if you have any skepticism whatsoever, this isn't for you. Oh my God. What you'll get inside of Storm. Okay, there we go. Pay in full $3,997. Of course, it ends in a seven, right? Or there's a payment plan where you get to pay an extra $1,000 by having to spread it out over three months instead of paying it in full in one day. Okay, so I suck at math. It's really like an extra $500. Just really bad at mental math, guys. Okay, do I think this, this was a good standalone video of an overview of marketing in 10 minutes? I would give it a C grade if I was going to give it a grade, mainly because I think there was some sub questions that she didn't answer. So she mentioned like the importance of brand guidelines, but not how as a small business you would make them or like a resource that you'd link to, except obviously her resource, right? That she's going to sell you something. Here's a free ebook. And now you're going to be in her funnel <laughs> without signing up for her email list. Her content is not universally useful. The other thing I think that I think could have benefited here, and it maybe would have made the video 15 minutes long in terms of content is giving examples at each stage. So giving one to two examples at each stage. So for example, branding guidelines, here are two different brands of two different coffee shops and why they're different and how it attracts different people something like that, just to kind of illustrate your point. Cause I think people learn from examples. So it's one thing to understand a basic principle. And it's another thing to give an example. Like, it'll be a lot more memorable if you give the example. Also, like I said, her content cannot stand alone without you downloading her free ebook and getting in her funnel and without you joining that course that she's building up the sale to at the end. So again, if someone's going to be like, here's overall marketing in 10 minutes, I think it should be a standalone useful piece of content without needing the supplementary materials. And I'm going to say about her what I say about most of these people, which is that you do not have to spend $4,000 to learn about the general principles of online marketing in the most up-to-date way. I will link to some resources I know that have either free courses or very low cost courses from companies like Google. <laughs> and then what you can do is you can just spend 50 or hundred dollars if you want to join Coursera for a couple of months and learn from these larger companies, or you can enroll in like a book or something like that, that is specializes in marketing. I'll link to some that I know about. And if you have some that you like, feel free to comment them as well. So basically spend like a hundred bucks or less learning about marketing in general, right? Ideally from a source like Google, who's had some longevity in the space. And then you're going to take the remaining $3,900 that you were going to spend with this person, walk down to your local marketing agency or reach out to us and say, Hey, 
I had $3,900 to spend on my marketing and I would like this to happen with my business. I would like more sales in my e-commerce store. I would like more people to be walking into my business on Tuesdays because it's slow on Tuesdays. I have a specific product or service for this demographic that I don't seem to be reaching. Whatever it is, you tell us, you tell the marketing company, and what we can do is say, okay, if this was our money and this was our goal, this is what we would do. And we could do that for you, or they could do that for you. And you're going to get a lot further for your business than you are enrolling in a general course by paying a guru $4,000 to learn about basic marketing principles. Trust me. I know it's a bummer. I wish there was one thing that worked for everybody. And I'm sure there's other industries too where you just wish one thing would work for everybody. It would certainly make your life easier, but unfortunately it's just not the case. And as you see, I am not some guru with a $4,000 course to sell you. I'm just a woman on the internet with almost two decades of experience doing this. So thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, I hope you stick around. If you want to peruse more marketing videos, there is a whole playlist called Nicole Reacts on the YouTube channel, as well as a category on the blog if you wanna see more of these videos. If you wanna lightly keep in touch, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, or you can join our email newsletter at breakingeveninc.com slash newsletter. And if you get a kick out of this content, I hope you consider sharing this with someone who also would get a kick out of it. I think sometimes YouTube doesn't know how to recommend this channel or this content because on one hand, we're a small business that does marketing tutorial style content, but we also do these kind of larger commentary videos about gurus. So I think YouTube algorithm doesn't quite know what this is. So thanks for your help there. So thanks so much for watching. And remember these marketing gurus will just keep on coming, but the good news is you have a friend and that's me in the marketing business who's not afraid to call them on all their bullshit. Take care and see you next time.